I wanted to give you an overview of a side project that I've been working on to get ready for fall classes. One of the things that I've been reading about uh, hybrid education is that one of the strategies that people recommend is doing your lectures online so that everybody gets the lectures online uh, and then having the classroom time such that you're working on hands-on projects and or doing class discussion. And that really works well for a lot of the quantitative classes that I'm teaching at RPI. And so with additional assignments, these additional assignments are going to be grading. And uh, one of the things I've been doing to prepare is, is to work on this auto grading solution that I've been iterating over on uh, for the last few years as part of my course uh, on introduction to machine learning applications. Uh, in this course, we use a lot of Jupyter Notebooks. Jupyter Notebooks are great for being able to uh, get up to and running with coding without a lot of uh, investment in time of configuring your laptop and uh, ensuring that you know everybody's getting the same coding environment. I particularly like uh, Colab, and you can see here we've got a bunch of different notebooks that are all configured. Uh, one of the other things that I think is really important for data scientists to learn is how to use Git. And so as part of this course, I've been also using uh, GitHub Classroom as part of the submission process. And so here students can get a starter notebook and then submit their uh, final assignment to GitHub. And this is a nice way just to get started with an understanding of uh, what Git's for and why it's important. And GitHub Classroom has been increasing a lot in the functionality so that you can uh, create your assignments, have this invite link, and integrate either to a learning management system or to uh, some type of course website. What I'll be going over here is this auto grading solution. So I've built something that can grade uh, both Python and Excel uh, because I think there are cases where some fundamental concepts uh, and some in some classes, Excel actually works really well to teach these fundamental concepts. So I think the combination of Excel and Jupyter Notebooks uh, is a really powerful one for teaching quantitative courses. So the, some of the fundamental workflows of what we're going to be doing. So you're going to collect the assignments either through GitHub Classroom or Blackboard. So you could have the students just upload your their uh, final notebooks to Blackboard uh, or uh, use GitHub Classroom for the reasons that I mentioned before. Uh, we're going to try to specify everything and have something set in the configuration files because uh, you might want to use these from year to year. You don't have to remember a lot of command line options and things like that. And we're going to use uh, grading from a Jupyter Notebook. And so what I've seen with MD Grader and some other solutions is you're using a lot of command line things. Uh, here we try to stay in a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, because we all like using them and it makes it makes grading and, and documenting the process a lot easier. To get started uh, for grading Python, you will need to have Docker installed. So the, this is built on some of the great work on Auto Grader or uh, Otter Grader that they're doing out in uh, Berkeley. And that uh, is one of many of the different products that they've created for uh, open source auto grading. Uh, you will have to install Docker from this to make sure the Docker daemon is running. Uh, for local grading, I definitely recommend just building the Docker container with all the requirements that you're going to need. That's going to make the whole grading, regrading process go a lot smoother. And uh, then installing uh, autograder. From, so from a command line, uh, just do pip install autograder. And what I will walk you through is uh, some of the different uh, settings to get started with grading your own assignments. But here, you, if you want to just see how to grade a sample assignment, you can click directly here on the grade Python or here for the grade Excel uh, notebooks and run through the example data that we have. This workflow for grading should work for, uh, for any different, different solution. Uh, the first thing you're going to do is to download the assignment uh, from either Blackboard. So in Blackboard, you want to click Download All Assignments. And what Blackboard is going to do is it's going to encode the file name in such a way that it has 
the assignment name, then the ID, and then some aspect of when it was submitted. And we could use that to uh, match it up later after the auto grading. GitHub Classroom, you use a GitHub ID, and what we'll need in this, uh, in order to match the GitHub ID with the student ID, uh, is a, a configuration setting of the roster, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit later. So let's first take a, a quick look at where the assignments go. And so when you're working with, with uh, auto, auto grader, uh, let's make this a little bit bigger here. Uh, you've got uh, a series of different directories. And so these directories, the assignments, are where a downloaded version of your assignment is going to be. Let me make this a little bit bigger. You've got uh, the configuration. The configuration is where we're going to put all of the tests. Uh, Docker is just used once for setting up the Docker container. Uh, modules are the, the modules we're using for uh, running the Otter Helper. Uh, notebooks is where we'll find the, the specific notebooks we'll use in grading. And output will uh, keep a, a copy of the different uh, graded notebooks and the results from those notebooks. So let's start with the assignments. Close out the rest of these for a second. So the assignments, uh, we have a a sample class with three sample assignments. So we have Blackboard, Blackboard Excel, and GitHub Classroom. And let's take a look, quick look at the, the uh, Blackboard directory. And you can see once you, when you download from Blackboard, it'll put everything in a single, all the assignments in a single directory with the structure of the assignment such that you have some type of assignment name, an underscore, this will be the student ID and then some aspect of when it was uh, attempted. These were taken from the uh, example, in, example in the Otter uh, grader. Uh, for GitHub Classroom, we've got a separate structure so that for a particular assignment, you'll get uh, a downloaded directory for including each one of the uh, student repositories, where this here is the um, directory, or is, is the uh, GitHub ID of the individual. So this, these are uh, equivalents of the GitHub ID, and we'll be using that and matching it with the student ID uh, later on. Okay, so that would be the first step. So the first step is downloading your assignments. Uh, once you've got your assignments downloaded and you're ready to go, you're ready to set up the configuration. Again, you don't need to do this, except in the case uh, where you're doing your own assignments, just to run the configuration, you can, you can skip all this. So uh, for the sample class configuration, so we're going to go to the uh, config.yaml file that's in sample class, config, sample class, uh, config.yaml. And here we've got uh, the links to this sample, the class name, class ID, a message students will get uh, when the grading is successful, a message if they don't have a submitted assignment, the number of containers that you wanna use, Docker containers that you wanna use when doing the grading, uh, any requirements that are required, as well as uh, the roster file, which we'll go over uh, separately. And then for each one of the assignments, uh, the assignments have a number of different uh, properties here. Uh, assignment gets a name, a type. This is the assignment ID right here. Uh, the, uh, the test path, uh, the, the place that the tests, hidden tests are, uh, are there, what this will do is it'll uh, copy over hidden tests uh, that can be uh, utilized uh, for the final grading. A seed, which is used as part of AutoGrader. I don't use it, so I'm not going to go over it here. And then any, any additional files. So these could be data files that you may have. And the setup process really involves making sure 
that all of the things that are set up in this configuration uh, match with additional uh, resources that are required for the assignment here. So for example, all of the files are, which are listed here are also uh, included as part of the files here. So you can have a commonplace use or maybe a data file that's used in multiple assignments. Uh, the roster file is uh, available and complete. And I'll just show you quickly the roster file here. The roster file is giving you uh, two things, one for GitHub collected assignments, and this would not be necessary for the, the Blackboard assignments, but it's doing a translation between uh, the username, uh, which is the student ID, and the GitHub ID. For Blackboard, uh, this is uh, a template that if you download and aim to uh, work, grade your assignment offline, Blackboard will give you this template with the username, student ID, last access, uh, last name and first name. Uh, and if there's a little checkbox uh, that says whether you add notes, that's what you should get to get these additional components. So uh, it's important that you, uh, before you grade, make sure that your roster is up to date and so that uh, all of the, the, the resulting grades will be uh, uploaded correctly to, to Blackboard. Okay, and so again, we had a couple different components here. Uh, verify that the tests and data were in the assignments folder. Uh, verify the appropriate files were in the files folder and the roster was there. The, I'm not going to go over the, the test creation process uh, in this video, but it's using the Otter Grader test uh, configuration and they've got some great documentation and the history of this is, um, these are uh, tests that were originally built on the uh, OKPy OK format. And so uh, what you can do is have a series of tests that are only for the, the uh, students so that they would you know, get these three tests, for example, when they run the notebook initially. And then you can have some additional hidden tests uh, that you use for the final grading. And so in the configuration file, you if you do have hidden tests, you can store them in this hidden test folder uh, so that those are used in the, in the final grading. And with that set up, uh, we'll be ready to run our notebook. And so when running the notebook, I'm going to start with the grading of, of the Python and uh, make sure that you've got the, the, you've gone through some of the initial, initial setup process um, but then you're, you're ready to go. So this, uh, initially you're, you're setting the course and the assignment ID. So the sample IDs, you could either choose Blackboard or, uh, GitHub Classroom for the sample data. We're next loading, uh, a bunch of configuration information. This is just things, uh, like where, uh, the extensions of the, the files that you're grading. So if it was .py versus IPython notebook uh, and, and so forth that the, the program will need as it, as it goes forward. Uh, if you've got your configuration set up right, that's, that's really just loading. Uh, next, we're gonna prepare the grading. And so we can use the formatting of the files to, to prepare some additional uh, configuration files that uh, Otter Grader will need. And so if we run this, uh, this is actually going to create uh, a temp directory and copy our notebooks over into the temp directory. And it's also going to create this meta.json file that is going to include the specific um, link between the user ID and the uh, notebooks that are included here. It'll copy over the requirements.txt and it'll copy over the associated tests. So everything and all the grading is done out of this temp notebook. 
And so with that, we're going to uh, run the grader. So this little exclamation point means this is run from the command line. So it's just going into the temp directory and then it's running the otter command, uh, which is launching, let's go ahead and run it here, launching a series of notebooks, uh, grading each of the, the, the results, and then uh, outputting the grades uh, into this CSV file. And let's give it a second to complete here. As you can see, it's going really, really very quickly. Uh, it will go much quicker if you uh, essentially have a blank requirements.txt and uh, do all of your initial build of requirements into the initial Docker container. Now we can load the results. So this is the grade file is in the temp directory. You can see uh, the logic here of the naming of the different ones. These are essentially tests uh, where it passes all is a student that got everything right. Uh, they're all a total of, of eight possible and they got them all right. And so you can see some variations of failing the hidden versus the other tests uh, as you kind of look through this grading. The last step is really generating the output. So now that we have this temporary directory, we're going to uh, take a look and uh, load that file. Then we're going to uh, generate the file that's ready to be uh, uploaded to Blackboard. And so each one of the, the students, first name, last name, they will get uh, a Blackboard uh, test grade. And in this example, we've got, I think, six of the students uh, that had submissions that were there. There were two students that weren't uh, included within that example. They're included in the Excel example, and they're getting the message that the, um, the actual result. And if you look back to the feed, into the feedback to learner, all of the grades for the, the specific questions are included there. And so if we go directly to this output file, and everything's been archived into this uh, output directory. So we've got all the difference and we've got our, our upload file that's ready to be uploaded to GitHub. Take a quick look. Anyway, and you can see uh, for question one, they received the one. Question two, hidden, they received the two. So the students are getting this full result so that they'll be available in the notes in Blackboard once it's, it's uploaded. All right, and, and that's it. You've got, you've got your, your file that's ready to be uploaded. It's already been graded. Uh, the students get a note with their detailed grade and you're ready to go. The the additional uh, grading is for Excel only. Uh, so this actually doesn't use uh, AutoGrader but uses the same general process of creating configuration. The only uh, difference in the setup is in this one, you're comparing uh, a solution file. And the solution file is located in the configuration, uh, in sample class, in Excel, and then solution. So this is real simple. Rather than uh, creating a bunch of tests, you just create a solution. If we go to the solution here, you can see that there's an answers directory. So you might have uh, different worksheets that students will do uh, any calculations, but you need an answers that has the columns questions, variable, value, points, and tolerance. And this is doing, setting up all of the different tests, uh, allowing any tolerance in, in type of answers. And uh, if you look through the Excel-based uh, grading, that's going to uh, really do the same type of thing. You're going to create the config. We're going to um, prepare the, the grading by copying things over to the temp file. 
We're going to run our grading, which is going to load each of the Excel files. We don't have to use Docker containers here because we're not uh, loading any executable code. Uh, Docker containers are a nice security uh, related configuration or a nice security related layer uh, that's protecting your operating system. Uh, for Excel or for CSVs in particular, we, we, we don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then finally, we're generating the output file. So this can be a consistent way of approaching uh, auto grading both for Excel and for Jupyter Notebooks. And I'm hoping that you get some uh, value out of this. If you do have any questions, feel free to use the Otter, uh, the Otter uh, Slack. So you can join the Otter Slack here. And I'd be glad to, to try to answer any questions. Uh, this hasn't been used by anyone other than me, so feel free to also post any issues uh, that you find uh, when using this in different contexts right here. Thank you and good luck.